Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you from the Gibraltar tournament of 2018. Michael Adams, one of the leading British grandmasters, was playing against Nils Grandelius. E4 from Adams, so this is round 10. The Sicilian defence from Nils Grandelius. Knight f3, d6, we have check, bishop b5 check. Bishop b7, white takes on d7, knight takes d7. White castles, knight gf6, rook e1. E6 and now D4, C takes, Knight takes, Bishop E7, C4, which is sometimes played after getting rid of the light square bishop. This kind of Maroxy bind. Black castles, B3, Rook E8, Bishop B2, Knight C5, Knight C3, and it seems as though Black is already discontented with this position with the Maroxy bind. Uh, Black plays a very energetic move which might not be entirely sound knight fd7 would seem plausible for example this continuation where black can sort of wait wait for white to really commit to something this is just an example line White has a small edge but black really um, played aggressively here d5 now Adams took with the e pawn which opens up this rook so he's trying to get all the pros without too many uh, cons here uh, e takes and he gets that f5 square now which he pounces into and here uh, bishop f8 was played if d takes uh, c4 then knight takes e7 check queen takes is winning material with a big advantage for white uh, so the bishop slides back to f8 Rook takes e8, queen takes, knight takes d5, and this is where I assume that black had foreseen this, and after knight takes d5, perhaps expected the recapture, queen takes d5. For example, queen takes d5, this position isn't entirely that bad for black. There's active pieces, there's a target on f2, the rook's controlling a d-file. But this dream is shattered here of reaching this position, actually. The dream is shattered after knight takes d5. Can you see how the dream is shattered? If I give you five seconds to pause the video here. So this is like a Mike Tyson style punch on the chessboard, really. So you might want to pause the video and see what is the strongest move in the position. Okay, knight h6 check, probably not expected, otherwise black wouldn't have gone in for this liberating idea to break the Maroxy bind. The point is here, if g takes, then there's queen g4 check, which is lethal here, be mating, for example. That's absolutely lethal. So black plays this, queen takes d5, and it's a very, very different scenario here now the pawn is pinned the f7 pawn is under fire there's no rook d8 here because uh, there's just knight takes f7 check now so none of this is happening no compensation really and in fact queen e6 is played just losing another pawn after knight takes f7 really after that one heavy punch the game is effectively over yeah it's like two pawns down for black here and this controls even the entry point even this entry point if that is considered entry point, it's not the knight's controlling d3 the bishop's controlling d2 without any entry points okay there's this vague pressure here that's unpinned basically bishop d4 that's taken two pawns down rook e1 knight c5 knight f3 rook d6 knight g5 threatening rook e8 check and black's just passive here, two pawns down. More simplification. This rook and pawn ending isn't exactly wonderful for black. A few more moves, fixing down the pawns on the king side. Mick Adams is sometimes nicknamed the spider because he's weaving his web which paralyzes his victim. So by fixing down pawns on both sides of the board, the pawns are now dead, all dead basically. And here, black. Perhaps not so inspired to play on, uh, resigns here. So, 
This is the time when trying to break out of Moxie binds met with drastic punishment, just leaving a position two pawns down without counterplay. A real clean win there, uh, kind of refuting d5. Hope you got something from that. So beware of breaking out of the Moxy bind uh, sometimes. Comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.